here we are. And I guess we want to be this way here. Okay. So, Elliot, what's the idea here? You got you got a hunk of hardware there in your hands, and uh, this is something you made, right? I mean, you actually this is well the designed and built. The black part here is the camera. The bottom face is the camera, and that's an off-the-shelf device. But the black stuff above is designed by me and 3D printed by me as a structure to support the lens and the optics. Okay, camera, lens, optics, what is this thing? What is it? <laughs> so it designed to do? This is a wide field of view camera. It has a very wide field of view, about 72 degrees across, designed to allow us to very efficiently scan the whole sky. And so what it does is the light comes in through here. There's a transmission grating, which means it's a... Get a closer look in the front there. ...piece of glass that breaks the light up spectrally like a prism and so a, a, a single color will, be, will, chain, will bend at a specific angle and will stay a tight beam whereas a broadband signal like we talked about earlier will spread out to be wide. And so we so can break down the optical spectrum of this much the way the ATA breaks down the radio spectrum of the yeah. analog signals. And so something like a, a satellite flashing, you know, getting the, the exact right angle in order to reflect the sun into your eye um, popular thing to, to go look at. It's called an iridium flare. Iridium flares. You get very bright, very brief flashes, but that's broadband because that's the sun's broadband spectrum that's reflecting spectrum. off of it. Yeah. And so this thing will take that, spread it out wide, and immediately throw it away because it's not tight and narrow. All right, well, let, 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 let's back up just for a moment here because you've been describing how it works, but what are tell we me, trying to do? Tell, me, tell, <laughs> tell, tell us first, indeed, what is the idea here? Why did you build this thing? You're, you're not looking for, uh, you know, iridium satellites. We know where they are. <laughs> this is true. Uh, what we're doing is looking for laser pulses coming from deep space. What is that? You know, this is what we call optical SETI. Broadband, That's true. Right? So there's some of you may have heard of this before. You know, we do radio SETI, but a newer method of search to take advantage of more technologies that we can assume are out there is something called optical SETI. Looking for laser yeah, Optical SETI is kind of like the... A SETI is the opposite of astronomy, where astronomy defaults to optical, and we have to say radio astronomy. Right. But SETI defaults to radio, and you have to prefix it with optical when you're talking about light. Well, you, well, you might point out that that's not for any particularly good reason, is it? I mean, it, isn't it just because just radio was invented before lasers were invented? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So, well, we, yeah, we did radio SETI before we did optical SETI, just like we did optical astronomy before we did radio astronomy. And it's safe to say, you know, as our own technologies evolve, we'll have better imagination of what other technologies might be used for communicating information, and we'll continue to adapt them to SETI applications. But this is pretty exciting. And this does something that nothing else, no other program in optical SETI has done before. Well, Or it yeah. proposes to. Why don't you address that? I mean, give us, what was the motivation to build this? Because there have been people that have been looking into the sky for, you know, flashing lights, uh, signs from ET, before. So, you know, what did you have in mind? Is it, this, this is not a hobby project. No, it's not. <laughs> uh, so the projects before, the, the most expansive one covered the northern sky entirely from what they, what they could see from one site. It takes about a year to do it, and so that means that they only see any particular point on the sky for about a minute. And so, for all the other minutes of the year, nobody's <laughs> looking. <laughs> nobody's looking. So we thought we, it'd be really important to cover the whole sky all the time, because instead of having to get the signal you can see at the right time at the right place, now you see the brightest signal that ever washes over the Earth. And so we started with with how do we make a practical version of that? Because having to you know build a million dollar telescope for every pinprick on the sky would would uh, quickly exceed even NASA's uh, very large budget. <laughs> Probably be larger than the defense budget. <laughs> <laughs> Might be. I don't Might know. Be. That's 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 yeah. pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, so uh, so we started w with a, a camera, something that would be have a really wide field of view, and then 